New, 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 new. All right, this week, um, I'm doing this one first because uh, we had it as a coming soon, but it finally arrived. It finally arrived. We now have the compute kit for Raspberry Pi compute modules, the Raspberry Pi 3 compute modules. So these are using that new, sweet, super fast uh, compute modules. You get the dev board and then two modules, a USB cable, and like a little camera adapter. You don't get a power supply, but you basically have everything else you need to uh, get started with the compute module. And the compute module, of course, has a ton more GPIO. So if you do need that, um, like let's say you want multiple cameras or like multiple displays and you want like GPIO as well, uh, the compute module is where it's at. So this, this kit gives you everything you need to get started. We'll uh, make sure it works with Blink Assume too. Yes. Next up, we have uh, the TS80 USB um, soldering iron. So this is a, a very nice USB soldering iron. We've actually had a bunch of samples for USB soldering irons come through and we've not stocked them because they did not heat up. And they're they terrible. Up. They're terrible. So this one's actually really nice. It's a little expensive, but believe me, it's worth it. This is the nicest USB soldering iron I've seen. The, only, the trick is it uses a Quick Charge 3, which uh, is a standard that allows you to um, you know, plug into one of these adapters that's QC compatible and you will get um, 9 or 12 volts out, not just 5 volts. So 5 volts, you're not going to get enough current from a 5 volt 2 amp power adapter, 1 amp adap power adapter. You need 20 watts to really get going. And so um, this adapter, it you know, comes with the USB-C, um, it comes with the USB-C cable and goes to um, this quick charge uh, adapter, um, which you can then use to charge, of course, your own USB devices, no matter what. But it's not too big of an adapter. Um, the other, um, you know, skinny style pen type um, soldering station from um, these folks, I thought the, the power adapter was so chunky. This one has an, a nice silicone cable, so this is really flexible, and it's heat resistant. And uh, the pen soldering station is also quite nice. It's very slim. It's easy to hold. Uh, the whole thing packs down quite uh small so you plug into the USB-C port on the end here so bam do that and then I'm going to plug this in so give me a moment okay so I plug that into my power and it comes up with a little um, OLED display so you can like set the temperature and stuff but for now I'm just going to heat it up so you can see this is heating and it heats up quite quite fast I mean it takes about 20 seconds to get up to temperature. So would you use this every day? This is a question. You could use this every day. I, I personally have, you know, a really nice Metcal station. We'll say if I took that away from you. Yeah, I can absolutely I use it. this. Yeah, this is totally fine. <laughs> I'm like, What's I don't know nice where it is, is. It's, it has a very light pen, which is something that, you know, a lot of um, plug-in uh, soldering stations don't have. This is very light and the cable is very flexible. Okay. Um, and it heats yeah. up Yay. and it melts very nicely. One say, we'll say that the one thing that is a little to watch out for is not a big deal, but the tips are not HACO compatible because right. they, they wouldn't fit on such a skinny end. What replacement tips would you use if you needed to replace you'd have to You'd have to, well, the tip will last a very long time because it's a high quality tip, but yeah. um, from the same company, from gotcha. Min. But um, this is a really, uh, it's really wonderful. You know, it has even the voltage uh, and, you know, whether it's heating yeah, or not. Yeah, we have a bin of shame, which is like every crummy... USB soldering Even iron. ones from big companies like Weller, they yeah. were no good. But this is a very nice um, soldering station, a soldering, um, portable soldering iron. And yeah, you can, you know, power it from USB, comes with an adapter, and uh, I love it. It's just, it's worth it, I okay. think, if you want a portable iron. This is pretty good. Next up. This is neat. Yeah, you asked for this. Yep. So what's what's your thoughts on this? Here's the thing. There's a bunch of single board computers, and they don't do anything until HDMI is plugged in. But you don't want to plug in HDMI all the time. You just want to, like, SSH in this thing and, like, set up your, like, blockchain and stuff. So this will help you do that. Yeah, this is a... It's it's for... Uh, it's tricking GPUs into thinking that a 4K HDMI display is plugged in. It's really just an I2C uh, EEPROM attached to the HDMI I2C pins, and it has the EDID in it. Yeah. But you know what? If you need this thing, we have this thing. Yep. Okay, next up. Next up, we have a 4H themed Circuit Playground Express, which you've seen a couple weeks ago, but now we have a right. base kit to go with it. So you get a pack, it comes in a nice box, you get uh, AAA batteries, a, um, a USB cable, USB-A to micro-B cable, the Circuit Playground Express, of course, and a battery pack with a switch. So 
What's nice about this is that uh, you get that 4-H branding, but you're ready to go out of the box. You plug it in, you can make it portable. Um, it doesn't come with any alligator clips or other components. It's kind of the minimum necessary to get you going, but this will definitely get you going. All right, next up. Next up, we have the motor bonnet for Raspberry Pi. So we've taken a lot of our hats and turned them into bonnets, just shrinking them down. Um, so they fit in the same size as a Raspberry Pi Zero, but they're also good for use with a Raspberry Pi 3. It does not need to be used on only a Pi Zero. It just happens to be the same size and shape. And um, it's backward compatible with our uh, existing hat. You can run two steppers or a stepper and a motor. And I have a live demo I can show. So um, the motors can run from 5 to 12 volts. So you see it's plugged in here on top of a Pi Zero W. I have a uh, stepper motor connected to uh, the stepper port over here. And I have a, a DC TT motor over here. And then um, to power, I'm just going to plug into uh, this uh, power adapter that's going into the uh, 5 to 12 volt motor power. Uh, when you plug it in, see the motor start turning. So it's super easy to get four DC motors or two stepper motors or one step or two DC motors going. It's got full PWM speed control, so this will uh, speed up and slow down. So for robotics projects or um, you know, making a little robot or mechatronics, it's really easy and it comes fully assembled now. So uh, it, in, ex uh, in comparison to the hat, this version has all the terminal blocks and the plug and play header. Let me grab one. It comes fully assembled like this. So no soldering is required. Um, there's I squared C addresses you can change if you want to stack multiple motor hats. For if you want to control like five to ten stepper motors, that's fine. Just keep stacking them up, um, and then you just have to power each one. But uh, it's very easy to get steppers and motors going, and we have Circuit Python code for both. So uh, try it out, and uh, if you want a super teeny motor controller, the motor bonnet's your friend. Okay, and next up, the start of the show tonight. Besides the community and you, Lady Ada. And it happens to be the name of the code. Which is? Well, Airlift Shield. Airlift Shield. So the Airlift is our uh, ESP, is the name for our ESP32 Wi-Fi coprocessor. It's actually using the, the NINA firmware from Arduino, but it's not a NINA module, so we want to kind of just make sure it's clear that it's, it's not a NINA module, it's an ESP32. And um, the firmware running on this basically takes care of all the Wi-Fi communication you could ever need, of SSL certificates, uh, so you can do TLS um, uh, connections, it does sockets, so you can you know, grab website data or JSON data, uh, I could stream MP3 data from uh, MP3 service, whatever you want. I've done a whole bunch of projects with this uh, module and it works great. Uh, the data is transmitted over SPI, it comes in little packets. As long as you get good power going to the ESP32, um, you can transfer quite a bit of data uh, very efficiently. And uh, we have a, uh, it was used in the Pi portal first, and that was quite popular. And then we did uh, Metro M4 Airlift, which had the Metro M4 plus um, the Airlift uh, module. And now we have a Shield version. Uh, we also have the Featherwing. So you can plug this on top of any Arduino. Anything that looks like an Arduino, Arduino and it also ends up being cheaper than getting one of the things that have like Wi-Fi built in. Which it is might, cool. yeah, because it's well. it's just, you know, whatever, 15 bucks, you plug it in. Yeah. Um, it uses SPI and a couple pins. Uh, you can use it with the uh, uh, something as light and small and inexpensive as the uh, Arduino or uh, Atmega 328, the like um, Arduino Uno incompatibles. Uh, however, you know you're not going to have a lot of RAM with those, so you can basically do some basic connection stuff. But you're really going to want to upgrade to the Metro M0, Sam D21, or Arduino Zero, yeah. or the uh, even better is the Metro M4, which has a ton of RAM, so you can read tons of JSON data and parse it. Yeah. And Use the Metro M4 in this, and your you're life will be better. golden. You're going to be so happy because you can just buffer like 250 bytes, kilobytes of data, and, and do whatever you want with it. Um, uh, that said, it does work on the smaller boards. So you can actually use it. It comes with level shifting circuitry. It comes with a micro SD socket so you can store data or data log. Little RGB LED. Um, just plug and play, solder on the headers, and plug it on. And uh, we've got Arduino code for it, so you can use the Arduino library. If you want to use it with CircuitPython, you'll need a Metro M4. It definitely doesn't run on the M0. You need a ton of RAM to do Wi-Fi stuff and internet stuff. Uh, with CircuitPython because it's it buffers a lot of data, and um, uh, but for that we also have CircuitPython code as well. So 
basically Wi-Fi for everybody with this new airlift shield. Okay. Testing products. Testing products.